In this video, you will learn how to safely and properly charge alkaline 9 volt batteries. Now a very large majority of my circuits I post online use 9 volt batteries and they're fairly expensive to replace. They could be three, four dollars and up for this battery and just playing around with your circuit you could drain this battery in one day. And the problem with the rechargeable ones is if you put them inside your electronic device and let it sit for a couple of weeks or a month they slowly discharge all on their own then you don't have a fully charged battery anymore so the beauty with the alkaline is that the voltage will remain the proper way to charge an alkaline battery and the most successful way without causing them to leak is with a pulsed DC current and it likes to be pulsed charged between 40 and 200 pulses per second so I decided to use 110 Hertz. Once I put together the 110 Hertz 555 oscillator, I fed that through a shot key diode, and that goes into a separate circuit, which is a constant current circuit. And I've made this put out roughly seven to between seven and eight milliamps into the battery. So every time the 555 sends a pulse, the constant current circuit will pulse in to the battery between 7 and 8 milliamps and that current will stay very steady until it reaches the voltage where the battery is almost charged around 9.6 and 9.7 which is right down here and what will happen at that point the constant current will no longer be around 7 or 8 it will start to drop now for this circuit you, you're going to want to use I had an old wall transformer laying around for a cordless telephone and this one is a 9 volt 200 milliamp so 9 volt DC 200 milliamps and the open circuit voltage of that is roughly 13.25 volts so we have the wall adapter supplying power for the entire circuit and the output on pin 3 is usually one and a half to two volts lower than the positive rail so we're coming in 13 and a quarter and it's also going to drop because it's going to be under a load so I, th I think the top rail was around 11 when I checked it and my voltage here you're going to want to check the voltage at the connector of the battery right here you want to make sure it's around nine and a half to ten volts you don't want it too high if it's too high then what you're going to want to do is take a 1N401 diode and connect it in series with the positive into the circuit that will drop the voltage into the circuit by maybe 0.2 or 0.3 volts. It'll lower it by that much. So we have the 555 sending out DC pulses on pin 3 passing through the Schottky diode into the constant current charging circuit. In this case the circuit is designed to put out between 7 and 8 milliamps and when the battery reaches near the fully charged voltage of 9.4 to 9.6 in that range then and only then will the constant current voltage begin to taper off. So you could leave this on here for a long time because once it reaches that 9596 you will no longer have that voltage going into the battery. The current will be dropping off. Now this transistor here is a Darlington NPN. It's an MPSA13 or an NTE46. This is a simple 2N3904 or a BC547. You could use a 2N4401. A lot of, them, a lot of different ones will work. You have a 100 microfarad capacitor across the rail, 10 nanofarad, which is a 103 cap or a 0.01 microfarad, a 0.47 microfarad from pin 2 to ground, and between pin 6 and 7 you have a 4.7K resistor. Between 7 and the rail you have an 18K. These three together create the 110 hertz pulses that are exiting pin 3. You do not want your alkaline battery's voltage to drop too low. Now a brand new battery is roughly 9.6 or 9.7. So use your battery and if you use it during the day and you drain it down, put it back on the charger and let it sit for a few hours and then take it off. There's no reason to have on this charger an indicator letting you know when the battery's charged because it can't overcharge. So pretty much just plug it in 
and it will charge up. This indicator is just to let you know that there is power going to the circuit. Okay, power indicator is on. I'm going to probe the battery connector here. Try and do this with one hand, it's a pain in the ass. Okay, probing the battery connector. And 967, it's a very good voltage. So the battery voltage cannot climb any higher than 967, 968, which is a good thing because you don't want it going too high. And we're going to take a look at the short circuit current flowing across the connector. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to eight point seven milliamps. Now it's a little lower when the battery's connected. It'll be like seven point three or seven point four. So that's stable at around eight. Now we're going to take the battery. Oh, let's check the. Let me show you the frequency output. You're going to see the positive of the battery is going to have one hundred and roughly 110 hertz. Let's connect this up. We'll take a reading on the, the pulses, what they are. And we have 0 0.110 kilohertz. So that's 110 or 111 hertz. So we have 110 hertz going to the battery positive. And those pulses are roughly 7 or 8 milliamps. And now we can, now let's take a look at the battery voltage here. Let's check the battery voltage. 904. All right. Now this battery has a good charge. It's right around 9 volts. I had this charging earlier. This was down to around 8.1, 8.2. And I let it sit on here for maybe 3, 4 hours and it brought it up to 9.04. So right now because it's at 904, I could maybe let this sit on here for maybe another few hours and then unplug it. Now when charging alkaline batteries, the next thing you want to do is make sure you do not allow the voltage of the battery to drop too low before you try charging them. It's better to have them drop off a little bit and keep topping them off. So in this case, if, this battery, if you use the battery and it drops down to say 7 volts or 7.2, that's like the bottom. You want to charge it at that point. Don't let it go lower than around 7, 7.2. Connect this to this charger, leave it on 24 hours. You could leave it on longer, you're not going to hurt it because once it reaches that 9.6 volts, no more current will be going to the battery. It'll just trickle charge it. Then you could re remove the battery from the charger and you're good to go. Now I've used this several times charging these batteries. I haven't seen any leaks. It, it retains the voltage well, so it is a good circuit. And I recommend people give it a shot. If you don't have a 555 IC, you can also use a CD4047. There are online calculators for calculating the 110 hertz. It'll tell you which values you need for the resistors and capacitors. And that is about it. Tried and tested. Give it a shot. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Thank you very much.